Welcome to um, the council meeting this evening. I will now invite my chaplain, Mr. S Tim Smith, to open the meeting with a prayer. This allows us time for some contemplation and personal reflection. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, just uh, for those of you who don't know me, as Mandy says, my name is uh, Tim Smith. I'm pastor of Heal Road Baptist Church, and uh, it's good to be with you here this evening. Forgive me, I need to uh, go fairly quickly because I've got another meeting to go to, but it's good to... Uh, I'm just going to read to you uh, one verse from Proverbs chapter 8. Um, I'm sure some of you will be aware of this verse. Uh, it says in verse 11 of Proverbs 8, For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Those are words written by Solomon thousands of years ago. But I believe they, they still resonate with us today. Let me pray for us. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the wisdom that we have gleaned over the years, just as we've gone about our lives and uh, whatever you've called us to, at work and at home, wherever we've been. And we thank you that we can use this wisdom, use the insights you've given us, even now today. And we're grateful that as we uh, meet here, uh, we have the opportunity to listen to one another and uh, to speak and, and share what is on our hearts and what is important. And Lord, we thank you for this area. Thank you that you've uh, called us to serve the people here in this bay. And uh, we pray that we would have all that in mind as we go through uh, this evening and beyond here. We thank you for the gift of wisdom. Hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be seated. Due to the high temperatures, I am not wearing the civic robes for this meeting. Please remove your jackets if you don't do so wish to. Would the Chief Executive um, please outline the procedure for today's meeting? Of course, Madam Mayor. So members, when speaking, please ensure your microphone is turned on. And to remind you that if you wish to raise a point of personal explanation or a point of order, you can do so by raising your hand and the Civic Mayor will allow the member who's speaking to finish their speech before taking these. If members wish to leave the meeting before it's finished, please follow Standing Order A 25.7 and give your apologies via the head of support. And members, lastly, you'll be aware that we are live streaming the meeting this evening. Follow it uh, via the Council's YouTube channel to encourage um, engagement in our public meetings. And the meeting will also, therefore, be recorded. Please can uh, members... and. Um, attendees in the chamber um, refrain from watching the live stream as it can cause interference for our viewers elsewhere. The purpose of this meeting is to deal with major issues for the well-being of Torbay and best, best interests of the community. A civic mayor I will ensure that today's agenda is dealt with efficiently. Fairness will prevail throughout the discussions with the meeting governed by strict procedures. I expect respectful 
speeches by councillors and along with healthy discussions. I will not tolerate um, inappropriate personal comments or repetition. Members, rest assured, I will interject if I hear this. Apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies for absence? Uh, we do this evening. Um, so we have apologies from Councillor Ellery, Councillor Dart and Councillor Manning. Thank you. Group leaders, do we have any further apologies? I don't believe there's any further absences, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I propose the minutes of the annual meeting and adjourned annual meeting of the Council held on the 17th of May 2022 be signed as a correct record. Do I have a seconder? I second, Madam Mayor. So, members, um, those in favour, please raise your hands. That's unanimous, Madam Mayor. If you could please sign the two minutes for me. We now move to declarations of interest. May I request, request the Chief Executive um, see if we have any declarations of interest? Of course, Madam Mayor. Members, um, do any members have any non-pecuniary or disclosable pecuniary interests in any of the matters on today's um, agenda? Madam Mayor, there's no indication. Um, same for officers. Officers, are there any personal interest in the matter on today's agenda? Um, Madam Mayor, there are none. Thank you, Mrs Bond. Thank you. I am pleased to welcome Mr Chris Robson from the Old Way Trust to give a presentation on the work of the Trust to the Council. Mr Robson, would you like to come forward onto the stage? Oh, this one, right, okay. Mr. Robson, would you like to start your presentation? And welcome. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Councillors. Um, as uh, Amanda just said, I'm Chris Robson. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you regarding Old Way and to update you on the work we have been doing and will be doing in the coming months. I've got an overwhelming feeling of deja vu, remembering how I addressed the Council back in 2019 together with the late David Watts, asking your new administration to support the work we'd been doing to save Oldway. You listened, and I'm back again. Although I'm not here to give my usual message of concern and decay, but one of a new found sense of hope and optimism. If you recall, the mansion was handed over to a developer for conversion into a hotel 11 years ago and sadly has remained empty ever since. Five years later, in 2016, the developer gave up the project 
and having made very little progress, and handed the estate back to the council. In an effort to decide its future, a working party was created that I volunteered to chair. That working party was expanded to include representatives from all interested organisations in the Bay, and I believe became something more than it was originally intended. The mansion came with a dowry payment, the remaining balance from the sale of Fernham Nursing Home site, now Singer Court, and with some of the money, a team of consultants led by David Clark Associates were engaged to explore the broad options for Old Way. The DCA report, which recommended setting up an overarching charitable trust to manage the estate, and modelled on the successful project they delivered at Insole Court in Cardiff, was presented to this council in 2018. This report, together with the overwhelming public support via two separate petitions and a huge presence in the public gallery, succeeded in preventing the then mayor's plan to sell off Oldway. Since that time, and the change of administration, work has been going on in the background, despite the pandemic, to bring the Oldway Trust into being. And I'm proud to be addressing you as its current chairman. The Trust now has in place a signed memorandum of understanding with the Council, an agreement to take a lease on the estate once the self-sustaining solution is in place. This document recognises the Old Way Trust as the Council's chosen partner in the regeneration of the estate. On behalf of the Trust, may I express our appreciation for the support it has received from the Council in these recent difficult years. During this same time, much work has been going on within the estate. The Old Way Gardens Volunteer Group, under the leadership of Tim Ely, took over responsibility for grounds maintenance and has kept the gardens in a terrific condition. The Friends of Old Way, led by Cathy Hughes, refurbished and reopened the tea rooms, which have been spectacularly successful in bringing people back into Old Way and highlighting the plight of the mansion to the wider public. Recently, the Council has been working with Historic England on their new heritage strategy, and thanks to that initiative, now enjoys a more positive relationship with the heritage community in general. As well as establishing the Old Way Trust, a successful bid for lottery resilience funding was submitted, and this has enabled us to appoint a dedicated project director to help us to build the case to apply for a major award and I'm very pleased to report that our project director, Catherine Finlay, is now in post and working hard to find the right solution for the future of Old Way. Over the coming months, Catherine will put structures in place to provide strong governance with good lines of communication and will assess how best the public can be engaged in this process. She will put together a team of specialist consultants, also paid for from the resilience funding who will delve deeply into all of the options and possibilities for Old Way. They will assess the viability of each option at a granular level, including how Old Way fits and integrates within the Council's overall estate. This work will build on the overarching trust concept within the DCA report, but will greatly widen the scope and go into much finer detail. They will also determine what works the building needs to arrest their decline and to begin their restoration. Catherine expects to have workable options, or even possibly a preferred proposal, to present to Council by spring next year. Catherine's team will then develop a robust master plan, a sound business plan, and a suite of conservation management plans for the estate to support a major funding bid or phased bids to the National Lottery. These plans will all be developed in parallel as they each inform the other. Finally, Torbay has an incredible built in environment inheritance, mainly developed during the Bay's golden age. It is high time we stop thinking about these buildings as a burden, but as a unique tre treasure trove that we should be proud of. What the research has shown is there is an additional market of younger, affluent adults who prioritize heritage when choosing a holiday destination and who currently perceive Torbay as not offering what they're looking for. We should be exploring how these assets can be best used to revitalize the economy. Of the heritage sites in Torbay, Old Way, 
topped the 2020 public consultation as the number one priority for investment with twice as many votes as the runner-up. On behalf of the Trust and everyone working and volunteering on behalf of Oldway, I thank the Council for your continued support and for listening to this brief update. Thanks to you all, Oldway has been given us another chance and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robson, Chris, sorry, for an excellent presentation full of so much positivity. On behalf of the Council, um, I would like to thank you, um, thank the Trust for all their work for Oldway. Thank you. In accordance with the decision of the Standards Hearing Subcommittee held on the 10th and 13th of May 2022, I invi invite Councillor Foster to make her apology to the Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wish to give an unequivocal apology for anything I may have said or anything of my actions that may have offended those attending the Housing Crisis Review meeting last September. Thank you. I now invite Councillor David Thomas to make his apology to the Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I rise to offer my sincere and unequivocal apologies for the findings of the Standards Hearing Subcommittee meeting held on Friday the 13th of May of this year, and I trust that the Council accept this apology in the manner it has been offered. Thank you. I have the following announcements to make. My attendance at the, at the recent Jubilee events was extremely varied. From being part of the beacon lighting ceremony to attending local street parties and meeting so many people throughout, throughout the Bay, especially at the Music on the Meadows Festival. It was a fantastic weekend and one I shall never forget. So many vari varieties of events um, that I was able to attend. I also recently attended an event where I presented certificates to year six children who had completed the Citizen Award. This was where schools across the Bay and across Devon came together to promote <coughs> the work that Year 6 children had done, including work for charities, um, staying away from home and getting involved in their local communities, almost like a younger Duke of Edinburgh award. It was fantastic. Pepsi had a fantastic time along with myself yesterday when we were um, honoured to meet the um, Prince, Prince Charles and, um, and his lady, and Camilla. And um, she was um, very touched by the dogs, um, both Pepsi and Jenny. And as I say, it was an honour to meet them and a lovely time had by all on Tor Abbey Meadows and I welcome them to Tor Bay. My civic luncheon is next Friday the 29th of July and I do hope to see as many of you as possible there. It will be at the Livermead Cliff Hotel as I say Friday the 29th and it should be a good event for all. Thank you. Has the leader of the council any announcements um, he wishes 
to make, including any updates as the Council's representative on the heart of the South West Joint Committee. Thank you. And as a um, first of all, on the joint of the, uh, joint of the Southwest, perhaps uh, on the heart of the Southwest Joint Committee, uh, I did attend this on, on behalf of the local authority uh, virtually. I'm. Uh, a, Sorry to say that it was the most appalling connection uh, to, to attend this, so I will be planning along with officers to attend in person next time, so we have got a clue of what's going on. Um, I will therefore circulate the minutes in due course when they do become available with colleagues over the next uh, few weeks. Um, a couple of other announcements I, I wanted to highlight to colleagues uh, was in respect of the recent local government association conference in Harrogate. Um, it was really pleasing to see that Torbay was taking their place at the top table there. Uh, Anne-Marie Bond, our chief executive, gave a a uh, well-received presentation uh, to new chief executives um, at, at the conference. Um, we know that it was well-received because um, myself and Cordelia feed had, had positive feedback from uh, attendees uh, around uh, the powerful um, presentation that Amri shared with uh, other delegates there. Um, I'd also like to highlight the presentation uh, that Cordelia our cabinet member for children's services gave in the innovation zone. Um, Nancy should have been there. Sadly, she was unwell, but Cordelia did an outstanding presentation, even though she was flying solo effectively. Um, and it was um, warmly welcomed uh, there. And it was good to see Torbay uh, actually sharing best practice rather than going there to hear best practice from others. Um, another area I wanted to touch on was that I'm pleased that Becky Thompson at the Local Government Chronicle Awards last night uh, was shortlisted um, as a finalist uh, for the Rising Star in Social Care Awards. Um, and whilst not uh, at the final pick uh, of, of actually being chosen, it is an accolade that uh, she, she made that you know, final shortlisting, and that is to be very much welcome in celebrating Becky Thompson for, for that achievement. And then finally, I wanted to touch on the local enterprise partnership and that a very recent meeting, they've allocated an extra quarter of a million pounds for our gateway project in, in Torquay and Shippey uh, to assist us with the expanding costs that we all know that we face uh, with uh, the construction industry. That extra quarter of a million pounds will help us get that building back better project over the line to help grow employment in Torbay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I understand the Chief Executive and the overview and scrutiny coordinator do not have any announcements. I move now to item eight, members' questions. Members, I will interject if I consider your supplementary question as to be a statement. Would the, would the Chief Executive now um, explain the procedure for members' questions? Thank you. Of course, Madam Mayor. So, members, the questions and answers have been circulated and are noted as submitted. And uh, these are available on your devices under a late reports pack. So, on behalf of this civic mayor, I will invite supplementary questions. And those questions have to arise directly out of the original question or the reply. To remind members, the supplementary question should not include a statement, and standing orders require that you only um, ask one supplementary question. And there is a time limit, so there's a time limit of one minute to ask the supplementary question, three minutes in terms of the response to it, but overall there's a 30-minute um, maximum time permitted on the agenda for members' questions. Members, on that basis, then... Um, referring to question one in respect of responsibilities of the council and um, unaccompanied asylum seeking children. Councillor Dudley, do you have a supplementary question? 
Uh, no, thank you. Uh, no supplementary question. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to question two, um, in respect of the standards investigation, Councillor Pentney, do you have a supplementary question? No, thank you. Question three, in respect of the commencement of works at the Harbour Car Park and Strand, Councillor Bai, do you have a supplementary question? Yes, please, uh, Madam Mayor. I, I thought the question had been submitted to the Deputy Leader of the Council, who'd written so very optimistically on the timetable of various talky projects in the Beach Hut magazine. But I do thank the uh, Councillor Long for regeneration for his answer. The, the simple supplementary is, how come when the fragrance group, with their same issues, facing the same issues, the collapse of Midas, who were their contractors on the new hotels on paint and seafront, how come they have managed to find a new contractor who's now almost completed the development of the new hotels on the seafront in Paynton, whereas we as the council with the same problem have not been able to make progress so far with the Premier in? Councillor Long. Thank you, uh, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, we can certainly ask the fragrance group. I imagine that the fragrance group have different uh, uh, procurement um, rules to follow than we do, and also we have uh, presumably have government requirements that we have to follow as well. We can get that in detail. Thank you. Moving then in terms of question four, which relates to the consultation results um, relating to the local plan. Councillor David Thomas, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Uh, no supplementary. Question five, in respect of the disposal of council land by the granting of leases. Councillor Kennedy, do you have a supplementary question? I do, thank you. Um, and thank you, Councillor Long, for your response. But uh, this is rather a complex issue, and I'm not in sure that the response is entirely correct. As the responses tend to be published whilst I'm en route to a council meeting, I tend to have very little time to digest any responses. So would you be amenable to my asking for further information at a later date? Councillor Long. Madam Mayor, as you know, I'm always amenable to uh, having further conversations with Councillor Kennedy. Members, moving to question six in respect of the levelling up funding bid. Councillor Dwyer, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you very much, I do. Um, thank you for answering part of the question, Councillor Long. Uh, Bricks and Fish Key Extension and the Electronics Industrial Unit. These projects are good projects on their own. However, the question I asked is which of the essential criteria of transport infrastructure, cultural investment, and town centre regeneration do these two proposals meet? Thank you. Councillor Long. Thank you. Uh Chief Executive. Um, unfortunately, the full answer, which does exist, didn't translate itself into ModGov for some reason. So that answer was answered. And from memory, it meets the regeneration element. But I'll get the um, uh, the full answer emailed to you when uh, when, it, when I get back. In fact, I may be able to find it in my emails uh, this evening. Now we're, now we're here. But yeah, thank you. Moving then to question seven in respect of the continuation of the rollout of the COVID vaccine program. Councillor Johns, do you have a supplementary question? I don't, thank you. Question eight in respect of Hatfield House development. Uh, Councillor Ati Alla, do you have a supplementary? I do, thank you. And I thank Councillor Long for the response that you have given me. Um, have relations, have, have relations improved since with Sanctuary Housing and other housing associations with these meetings? Thank you. Councillor Long. Thank you uh, very much. Yes, relations with housing associations and Homes England um, are very, very good. And 
um, Homes England seem willing to um, invest in Torbay uh, again, and uh, uh, there are a number of projects that they would like to do in that with that regard. Um, and uh, I'll always remember my first meeting with Homes England when I mentioned that the council were now keen on affordable housing, and they almost fell off their chairs because I'd said that. Moving to question nine, this one's in respect of council support for local traders. Councillor Loxton, do you have a supplementary question? Madam Mayor, I have no supplement question. Question 10, in respect of the progress of the paint and high tech cluster, uh, Councillor Douglas Dunbar, do you have a supplementary? Madam Mayor, I do not have a supplementary question. Coming on to the second round then of questions, question 11, um, in respect of subject access requests, Councillor Dwyer, do you have a supplementary question? I do. Thank you, Councillor Carter, for your response. Um, we are clearly failing significantly to uh, meet our own and national ICO targets. I note we appointed a dedicated SAR post back in January of 2021, but our performance actually deteriorated further in that year and since. When in this financial year do you expect with the additional, additional resources that you will actually meet the expected 95% target? Councillor Carter. I will have to um, check those figures out and find out when we can get on top of this. I'm dearly hoping that we can get on top of it um, fairly soon, but um, I will get back to you and email you exactly when. Moving to question 12 in respect of help for families in need, Councillor Dudley. Do you have a supplementary question? No supplementary question, thank you, Madam Mayor. Question 13, then, in respect of Swiss co-investment. Councillor Pentney, do you have a supplementary? I do, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor Murray, for your response. Um, some positive news about the equipment that Swissco have acquired, which will help uh, maintain and tackle issues around street cleanliness. Um, in your response, you referred to um, uh, 10 years of grime to catch up on, i.e. a long backlog. Would it be fair to assume that such a long backlog is uh, largely a failure of previous administrations to get a handle on this serious issue. Councillor Maury, please. Excuse my back, uh, Councillor Pentney. Um, yes, the answer is we do approximately have a, a 10 year backlog. Um, as you sort of intimated, this is largely due to austerity. Uh, a lack of commitment to uh, street cleaning. Um, and of course, for most of that time, Swisco was not in existence. Uh, we were dealing with another body. Um, it will take approximately another two years to, to play catch up, uh, unfortunately, because, because of what I stated earlier on. Swisco will be undertaking an extensive deep clean exercise over the uh, winter period. Um, and areas such as town centres, harbours, other three towns, may I, may I stress, uh, will be covered. Um, there are three towns and they're all suffering from cleanliness in one for, or lack of it in one form or another. So. Uh, we, we, we got uh, plans in, in progress to, to start the ball rolling in, in the, uh, this winter. Okay. Moving then to the third round of questions, uh, refer to question 14 in respect of the Harbour View Hotel. Councillor O'Dwyer, do you have a supplementary? Councillor thank you for Councillor Byes and my uh, question. We had similar areas of concern. Um, so we've had a contractor since March appointed. We have the working crane that has come down. Uh, there was a flood recently pouring down through the building just prior to the heat, to the, uh, the heat wave. Penalties potentially building up for non-completion. 
but no current idea on the expected or total costs to bring the building to a lettable, saleable uh, standard. How can you evidence to me that this project now fits within our strategic redevelopment framework? Because if you don't know the costs, you, I think you might struggle to answer the question. Councillor Long. Thank you very much, and thank you for the question. Um, and it's interesting that neither of the questions from the, uh, the Wells Wood Warriors have, uh, have mentioned the challenges that the council, like other councils, has been facing over the last two years to do with a pandemic, uh, to do with Brexit, and uh, all the economic shocks that have, uh, have faced, faced us. In terms of the final costs, the, the new contractor, I understand, is going to be giving us the final estimate of the cost very, very shortly, so we should have that news and uh, be able to advise you. Thank you. Moving then to question 15 in respect of Hatchcombe Nursery Site. Councillor Dudley, do you have a supplementary question? Uh, no supplementary question, thank you. And then question 16 in respect of Torquay Safer Streets bid. Councillor Pentney, do you have a supplementary question? I do, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Councillor Carter for your response. We all hope the, uh, the Safer Towns bid is successful. Um, to, to give my um, residents some reassurance, is it fair to assume that um, this bid, and it's a strong bid, combined with the other measures we're taking to deal with antisocial behaviour, demonstrates that this authority is um, dealing or tackling this issue with the urgency that it merits? Councillor Carter, please. Yes, we take this very seriously. That's why we have done the bid and um, are trying to get um, other funds from different other partners as well. So, um, and you can see from the answer in the question how detailed that bid was. Madam Mayor, that is the um, end of the questions today. I now move to item seven, curbside green waste collection service. Please refer to page 17 and the revised officer recommendation published on the 18th of July 2022. Can Councillor Mori please, can Councillor Mori please put the cabinet's recommendations to the council? Thank you, um, Chair. Madam Mayor, um, with Council's agreement this evening, Torbay residents will have, the, will have a garden waste collections under, under the plans considered by us and Swissco. Collected garden waste would be turned into compost. This will be all done locally. It takes four months to convert from garden waste to high-grade compost, which will have no additional additives or chemical process and will be completely organic. This is part of other wider plans to increase our recycling rates in Torbay from the current 37%, which is, as we all agree, is far too low, to the target rate of about 50%. 50, 50%. Through the introduction of uh, a garden waste collections alone is not is anticipated to increase recycling rates by up to 6%. As you know, in addition to the council and Swiss school have just started to roll out the new Right Stuff, Right Box campaign aimed at simplifying household recycling with the introduction of a new coloured coded system and an extra bag for paper recycling. So based on feedback from other local authorities in Devon uh, who have introduced similar schemes, it is estimated that up to 25 households could opt into this garden waste scheme. There would be an initial cost of 1.6 million to kick the, the scheme off, and the service would cost around an, another 1.2 million per year to run. This is to enable the new service to be launched. Uh, Swissco will be investing in more staff and more vehicles. We have listened to local residents and we know there is a definite interest in the garden waste collection scheme for households 
We are committed to doing all we can to tackle climate change and to make Torbay carbon neutral by 2030 and increasing our recycling rates and reducing our, our, our carbon footprint. Um, these are essential part of, this is an essential part of this and introducing a new garden waste collection and simplifying our household recycling system will all help. We know that hundreds of tons of garden waste is disposed of with residential household waste each year. By introducing an opt-in garden waste, we could have a big impact on reducing that. And also by using the garden waste collected as compost, it's a win-win situation. The only green waste recycling option other than garden composting currently available to residents is the Household Waste and Recycling Centre at Paynton and also the, the uh, remote collection points in Torquay and Brixham. These, com uh, these uh, collection points will continue. Feedback from the community engagement by the recycling support coordinators show that there is an appetite for this service within Torbay. It is intended that the green waste collection would be on the same day as a residential, uh, resi sorry, resi residual waste collection, but on alternative tweaks to the black bin. Chairman, it is that in mind that I move the following um, recommendation, and that is that the Director of Finance be delegated authority in consulting with the Leader of the Council and Cabinet Member for Finance to provide council funding by prudential borrowing for the council to purchase the bins for the garden waste or to provide a loan to Swissco for their, for the per, for their per, uh, purchase. Up to the, the indicative amounts set out in the exempt appendices one and two to be submitted, uh, that is submitted by the report. Chairman, I so move. Thank you, Councillor Murray. Do you have a seconder? I rise to second, Madam Mayor, and reserve my right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Law. I now will invite debate, and we have Councillor Lewis, I believe, first. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Chairman. Um, and of course, we welcome this. Any increase in recycling is, is a, a, a bonus for the Bay. However, or a but, there's always a however or a but. Um, it must be a priority to get that green waste away. Many of our residents live in small houses with small gardens. And it's no secret that a lot of, the put, a lot of them put them in the black bag and put them in with the general rubbish. And that's what we want to try and stop. And presumably, this is why the administration have come up with the idea of the green bin, which we're not against. I think it is a shame that this didn't come to overview and scrutiny before it came to this council, where we could have looked at it and put our views. Indeed, the opposition, I think the first we heard of it when we had the re report and I had a briefing from officers. So again, that's a shame, because I think there could be alternatives to this scheme. We are living in difficult times at the moment, and 50 pounds to some people is an awful lot of money when they're actually getting that for free at the moment by putting it in the black bin. And I would hate this scheme to fail, having spent over a million pounds to, to get it going. Like a lot of these schemes, I think the administration could look at it, certainly for the first year, and this is going to be rolled out in November, I understand. So in November, when we're probably not cutting our lawn quite as often, mind you, we're not cutting it now either, um, but one day it might rain and the grass will, will grow. But in November, as we all know, you don't have so much garden waste. In the spring, you have a lot of it. To kickstart it, and when we are, you know, a lot of our residents are in difficult times, why don't you give a free ride for the first year, get people used to using the green bins, which they will do, and then really kick it off. Well, we'll probably be doing that in May, but... Um, just in case we're not there to do it. Um, 
kickstart it in, in, in May so that those people are used to using the green um, bin and then bring in the, 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 the cost of it. That way, I think you will get greater takeoff and it will be more successive, successful. Just a thought, um, but one that I hope that the administration will look at before they implement it uh, fully. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Mayor. Councillor Jackie Thomas, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, I welcome this motion, as just after I was elected in 2019, I put this very question into Council. Whilst out on the doorsteps in King's Ash, quite a number of residents had asked for this very service. It will benefit many people in my community. But what I am disappointed with is the fact that the administration dithered and delayed in bringing this service to the council. As just think what introducing this service earlier would have improved our recycling rates in the Bay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Um, Councillor O'Dwyer. Thank you. Um, we do need a green waste collection. It is an important part of the, uh, the way that we will get to a higher recycling rate on the household waste. I would like to see us target a full uh, percentage on, on recycling to include our commercial waste and, and other areas as well, rather than just a focus on the household waste. However, is this the way to do it is a good question. Um, I don't know fully, but the way proposed here seems like a tax. Money to pay for your bin, first up, money each year as well. A tax on those who want to recycle. A tax on those who want to clear their own green spaces. Um, will it save the car journey to the, the, the tip? Um, well, maybe, maybe not, because uh, the trucks are very diesel-y and are heading there and back anyway. And we'll do so whether they've got any green waste in them or not. So if you're looking at the full life cycle analysis of recycling, is this Lord the way Dwyer, to do it? Can I just stop you there, please? I think we've gone a bit off, off piece because we're looking at um, the, the motion about the potential borrowing um, and we, we're not going into it as such detail as you are. So if you could bring it back to the actual motion on the table, please. Absolutely. I'm not happy with the revised recommendation, to tell you the truth. Um, it's still quite woolly. Um, what is it based on? How much um, are you actually proposing to borrow? There's a figure that's in part two, um, but there's several figures in appendix one and appendix two. There's probably, what, two million quid difference in those figures? So what figure you're actually talking about. They're very different. So I would actually like to know what you want to borrow. I'd also quite like to know what rate you want to borrow. At what point doesn't it become efficient? At what point does it start costing this council more money? I get that. None of that information is here, unfortunately. So it's quite difficult to make a decision on how much you actually want and how much you're going to pay for it. So is that I'm allowed to talk about that? I don't know, maybe. Um, Money doesn't grow on trees, but it can be made from rubbish, as this council seems to be proving, charging uh, these kind of sums. So finally, why 25,000? Um, as I assume that's the kind of bins uh, and households, as I assume that's the kind of figure you're talking about borrowing, specifically within this recommendation. But actually, that's not what it says in the report. It's got a different figure in there. It's got several different figures. And 6% we're going to boost the, the rates by. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about boosting the rates for this amount of money. So I think it is quite relevant. Is the 6% saving or boost to the recycling based on the 25,000 that we Rob, heard about? Or is it based on the 25 Cal units Dwyer, that someone mentioned? Can I yeah. stop you again? I'm sorry, but we mustn't be mentioning figures here. Uh, I, I, is... I mentioned 6%. That's in the report. That's in the... Uh, of boost to our you, recycling rates. I think you mentioned some million or 25 million, so... No, 25,000 households, which is what right. counts. Actually, he said 25 households. I assumed that he meant 25,000 households. 
Yeah, he's cutting costs. That would make it quite expensive if it's only 25 houses. But, <laughs> so I assumed he meant 25,000, and that's the figure I meant, uh, or I spoke about. But actually, there are several other figures in this report. So I would like from officers or from the member him, for himself to say, how much do you want? How much is it going to cost this council? How, uh, what rate are you going to pay for it? None of that's in here for me to comment on and find out if it's actually worthwhile because it does seem like a tax on uh, residents who want to recycle. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bai, please. Well, well, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, I want to start off by saying, you know, even this Liberal Democrat independent administration does get something right occasionally. So the, the principle of, of this project I welcome. Councillor Edouard actually asked the question that I was going to ask. He and I, possibly alone, are the only people that listen to Councillor Maury when he's speaking. And he did actually say that, and he's not listening now, never mind. He, he did actually say he thought only, tw he thought 25 households would be interested in this scheme. And I wanted him to answer whether he really thought it was 25 households, in which case I think the business case might take a bit of a hit, or, or whether it was more than the 25 households. If it's only 25 households, I think we really are in considerable trouble. So some clarification on that. I think actually, in fairness, you know, Councillor Edouard, we're a great team. Um, you'll miss us when we're gone. Um, he, which we will be, um, but I, I think we, we you know, Councillor Edouard looks at the detail much more than I do, but I do think on this occasion uh, a better response, a better response to the questions he was asking on the business detail. I mean, I'm thrilled that this administration, after three years in office, hopes now to get the Torbay Council recycling rate nearly up to where it was when I left office in 2011. So is, isn't that is absolutely progress? I think it peaked under my successor, uh, Councillor Oliver, and then things did go rather downhill. But um, I'm sure it was nothing to do with him. But we, we got it up to 40-something percent. You're saying it's now 37. With this scheme, you might get it back up to where it was when I left office 11 years ago. Isn't that absolutely amazing? I was campaigning. Uh, no, I wasn't. I was out investigating a pathway which just happened to be conveniently on the boundary of the Wellswood, Ellicombe and St. Mary Church ward um, this morning, so how about that? And there was a lot of um, fly tipping of green waste, which I shall investigate and report back to residents in Ellicombe and St. Mary Church and Wellswood, just depending on how I feel towards the run-up to next May's elections. But I do feel, I do feel that this um, initiative could, in fact, tackle green fly um, tipping. So, well done. Keep up the good work, and you'll nearly get as good as I was. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bai. Councillor Steve Darling. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I just wanted to tackle a, a couple of issues that colleagues opposite uh, raised. Um, can I remind colleagues that this is an opt-in service that people will choose whether to, to participate or not. Um, at Cabinet, uh, it was also shared that people could choose to share a bin if they live in more modest properties with more modest gardens. Uh, the main thing is that we need just to um, we, we need to have the opportunity uh, to, to, to roll this out. And the suggestion that we were dithering and delaying is is just you know, for the birds. It, the reality is, um, colleagues, we have gone through a pandemic. I don't know if people noticed this, and that had a significant impact, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's Brexit, or whether it, it's the international situation at the moment. We have had a significant hit on HGV drivers and their training. Um, that has impacted on our waste and recycling. And equally, um, many of our operatives, and I, I think it's a pity that colleagues don't acknowledge the hard work of our operatives who've worked rain and shine throughout the pandemic while many people stayed at home and were able to work from, from you know, the kitchen table. Many of our operatives have been out working hard and many of them have had been hit by COVID by having to go out and work. Um, and that has impacted in, on our ability to deliver our waste and recycling services from time to time over the last couple of years. And so, Councillor Thomas Jay, the fact of the matter is, if we would have la launched it sooner, 
then we would have been in difficulty to actually continue that service because we were having difficulty due to the aforementioned issues in actually doing the day-to-day the -day job of our waste and recycling collections. Now we're on that firm keel, mostly thanks to the decision of this administration taking back in-house Swissco and getting a firmer grip on it compared to the, um, you know, where we're effectively a hostage client uh, from the contract that the Conservatives previously signed up to with the private sector. We're now masters of our own destiny. We heard earlier on in the meeting where we were able to invest in kit, and this, sadly, has only been the first time that we're able to truly have confidence and drive forward with this programme. Um, but I would remind colleagues that November is a backstop. We would hope that we would be able to bring that forward, that date, um, for, for drawing this out to people, because the sooner we get these out, the sooner we can drive up the figures. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Darling. Councillor Barron, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and whilst I uh, obviously support opportunity to try and increase the uh, recycling rates, that's good news, great. Uh, I have some reservations that uh, some members of our community will say, well, hold on a minute, 50 quid might not seem like a lot of money to, to some people, but uh, aren't I already paying my council tax? Why am I having to pay an extra 50 quid? Uh, also, a quick calculation, 50 quid is about... 2.5% increase on a uh, band D average council tax. And so they may well feel that this is a, a Lib Dem independent sort of backdoor increase, uh, yeah, backdoor increase in tax. Um, there's also the point of view that has been suggested if it's, uh, you can't afford the 50 quid, perhaps you can share it with your neighbours. Uh, great in the wonderful land where everyone lives in harmony. Unfortunately, we do have some neighbours who don't get on so well sometimes, and if a bin is shared, let's say between two or three or even four properties, and property four comes along one day and the bin has been filled up by property one, and there's no room for their waste, it could lead to some disharmony in that neighbourhood. And my final point, Madam Mayor, is that uh, as I've uh, researched is, is that South Hams actually do provide this service but do not charge for it. So I can see a situation where you've got the, uh, the Torbay uh, bin trundling down the dual carriageway, gets to the roundabout, turns left into Torbay, and that's been paid for. The South Hams bin comes down the, 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 the dual carriageway, turns right into Malden, who get it for free. Now, some of those neighbours may well again say, well, hold on a minute, that doesn't seem very fair. We're, uh, we're having to pay 50 quid for that service, and those across the other side of the roundabout aren't having to pay for that. So whilst I do support the, the uh, opportunity to increase waste collection, I do have my reservations on the charging for the points I've just made. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barron. Councillor David Thomas, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, first of all, um, welcome this scheme. I think residents on the whole will welcome the initiative. It is such a shame that it's being rolled out so late in the year. As uh, Council Barron has pointed out, the cost could well be an issue for some residents. So I think, you know, the que a good question that I have at the moment is that share a bin message that we hear loud and clear from the administration, will that be a message that is actually shared wider than this council chamber? Is that something that is going to be actively promoted that residents can share a bin? Um, I've got two concerns. So our biggest concern remains around the waste strategy. The administration put in place two aims and two big pieces of work into the waste strategy. Councillor Thomas, I we're not discussing the waste strategy though this evening. We're discussing. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, waste recycling and the green waste. And, th and therefore, the first item that was in there was the Green Waste Collection Service. And that's what we're talking about this evening, and that's what we absolutely support tonight. However, in there was also a three-weekly bin collection. 
we are not discussing three weekly bin collections tonight. We are discussing prudential borrowing for, as, as it says in your minutes. So please, can you keep on the subject that we're supposed to Of be course, discussing? Madam Mayor, of course. But the, I, I think that the subject is slightly wider. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's, let's get back to the green waste collection. Let's leave the three weekly bin collection to one side because thankfully that's not coming forward tonight. The leader of the council talks about dither and delay. And from his own words, he says, it has taken three years, but that is not dither and delay. So I guess question must be, is that normal process? Is that the normal speed and service that we can expect as that is not dither and delay? 6% uplift in the recycling, that is for a full year. So, Councillor Bai, with regret, I'm afraid there is no opportunity at all to see that 6% uplift in this year because it's only going to be rolled out by November. There's very little grass becoming into the system. Uh, and so really, by the time we start to see some green uh, waste coming into the system, we're going to be looking at March time, which may represent a 2% uplift. And I'm delighted to say that when I actually looked after the portfolio for housing, waste, and energy, we were up to 42%, as I say, dreadfully, dreadfully in a different position now. However, I think it is a step forward in the right direction. We will be supporting it. Glad to hear that November is a backstop. So really, two questions. Can we ensure that November is the backstop and it is delivered absolutely ASAP? And can we get that share of bin message out? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Cowell, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, it's interesting we hear about dither and delay from the dither, dither and delay specialists. Um, Councillor Darling pointed out the fact that we, we've had the pandemic. Where services have been delivered, green waste services have been delivered in, in other local authorities, most of them suspended that service because they couldn't cope with the um, loss of staff, uh, the HGV driver crisis. Um, South Hams are actually looking at bringing their service back in-house. We inherited Tor 2, which was a, an appalling setup. Um, it was set up to fail in many ways, and that may have been the legacy of one of the former mayors of Torbay, who claimed success on other issues. Um, but we acted to start moving towards the green waste collection as quickly as we possibly could, once we had resolved the the day-to-day -day operational issues uh, within Swiss, Swissco. In terms of the cost model, the cost model is very similar to that of many, many other neighbouring local authorities. South Hams is an outlier. It's one of the only free services um, in Devon. Um, all the others, uh, most of the other local authorities across the region actually charge a similar amount. We will also be offering a discount for those in receipt of council tax support. Um, so that we know that we can actually offer some kind of um, uh, help for those on lower incomes. And in terms of lower incomes and the cost of living crisis, I don't think I want to take any lessons from members opposite. Um, so, the, um, I, I haven't got a very um, burdensome garden. I only have to cut the grass. It's low maintenance. But I know many people who do have gardens, and quite often they're actually clearing uh, at the end of their season, um, their autumn clearance. So towards the uh, October, November time, when this system will be coming in, there will be a, a certain amount. Of course, it's not going to be at the volume that it will be when people start preparing from the spring onwards. Um, but there will be a certain amount. And for every tonne of green waste that goes into this service, that's a lot of that would have otherwise gone into uh, the residual bin. Um, and we want to discourage that. We want to encourage people to uh, take it up. 25,000 may actually be uh, a, a conservative estimate. Uh, it may be that longer term there will be um, a greater take up which will actually uh, improve on, on the delivery and the business model. And the idea of being able to deliver it free, well, I'd like to know how that can, can be costed. And the trouble is, if you introduce a service and it's free, then 
the resistance when you actually introduce a charge for a, a later date will, will actually be counterproductive. Um, better that we actually start on the same sort of model that we have elsewhere in the country and across the country, in fairness, um, than, than the, the proposal to uh, phase it in in some way. And just for the avoidance of doubt, three weekly is not on our agenda. And, 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 and we will be proving that in, thank, and we will be you, proving that in due thank course. You. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, and uh, no need to worry, Madam Mayor, like this administration, I won't be going anywhere near three weekly. Um, the, um, just for your assurance, um, this proposed scheme is incredibly popular, whether that's on the streets of um, uh, King's Ash or St. Mary Church or Preston uh, or indeed Barsmith Whatcom on the doorsteps, they're, they're, they're welcoming this. I am, however, very confused by the arguments coming from uh, the opposite benches this evening. Uh, we're having demands for it to be free. We're having questioning the whole business model, which basically means don't do it and we're having agreement as well. So I'm slightly confused as to what the, the central argument is coming from the party opposite. Um, and free really isn't free because that means it's on the council tax bill. And of course, then you have upset neighbours in flats, whether that's in Wellswood or anywhere else, who will have to contribute towards it, but don't benefit from it. Um, so it would be a tax, a green waste tax on those who can't actually utilise it. Um, and as for, for South Hams, I think, Councillor Baron, you might want to go and speak to some residents in uh, South Hams about what they think about their, their waste service altogether, because I think they're all up in arms about the poor service that they're, that they're, they're getting. Um, in terms of dither and delay, it's actually the central government which are dither and delaying on, on this, because they've been threatening to uh, bring in or require councils to have a green waste service and they haven't been, and they've been doing that for longer than three years, so it's not local authorities uh, who are doing it. Um, and in terms of uh, free, I can only imagine what Councillor O'Dwyer's questions for Councillor Lewis will be later about how his business model stacks up for, for Greenway. So um, I'm sticking with the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Long. Councillor Howgate, please. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, I welcome some of the constructive comments from the um, colleagues opposite, but I do think there was one little bit of imprecision about language which um, a, a, a mere few seconds Googling would correct. The idea that this was some sort of additional tax is a rather mischievous use of the English language, I think. And if you type in tax definition, the very first thing that will pop up on your screen is that it's a, um, a compulsory, a compulsory uh, payment. Um, so it's a rather, I beg your pardon, a compulsory contribution to state revenue, much the same, much the same point. And the whole point about this is that this is a service which is optional, so there, there is no compulsion whatsoever. So it's somewhat mischievous to paint this as an additional tax, it's plainly nothing of the sort. And I just wonder whether the colleague that used that phrase was perhaps um, being influenced unduly by his time campaigning for Conservative Central Office rather than thinking purely about the best interests of residents in Torbay. Equally, I was rather amused um, to note that there was a great concern about neighbourliness and good neighbourly relations. And I just wondered again whether the person making the suggestion that this was a tax was a, in any way unduly influenced by his time working in Ukraine for Viktor Medvedchuk who is um, one of President Putin's closest allies. So perhaps his concern about good neighbourly relations stems from that experience, I wonder. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Pentney, please. Yeah, I mean, we heard from uh, Chris Robson earlier this evening, of course, and I want to use a phrase he often used, saying, I wasn't going to speak to this item, but... Um, and indeed, I wasn't going to speak to this item, but it's other ridiculousness coming from the opposite. Like, to bottom line this, we're expanding a service. We're offering a service we weren't offering before, 
and it's an opt-in service. Now, residents across Hall Bay are going to welcome that. So how you can try and make some political uh, mileage out of this is just ridiculous. And the fact you can do it with a straight face actually probably deserves some credit because it's just ridiculous. We're improving the offer for local people and people who want, wish to buy into it can do. So you know it's a good offer. Stop playing politics. Let's get on with it. Thank you, Councillor Pentney. Um, I've got Councillor Atiala, but we have heard from a lot of people. Is it, is it something new, Councillor Atiala, you want to add? Absolutely, Madam Mayor. Just as a climate change champion, I actually do welcome this policy. It's not an extra tax, and it's not uncommon that local authorities, and yes, you can chunt away at me, Councillor Barron, but um, they're at the, you know, in terms of local authorities, it's, un, it's not common that there is a subscription charge. It is optional, and therefore, you know, many people will subscribe to this. Thank you. Now, as there's no further debate, I go back to uh, Councillor Law for your... Um, do you wish to say anything? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think uh, most things have been said this evening. Um, but it, it does make me smile. This scheme does bring us in line with our neighbours and neighbouring authorities. South Hams might be offering it free, but I think South Hams residents would be very grateful if their ordinary rubbish was collected. Even once a month, they'd be happy with at the moment, which is why they're trying to take their service back in-house. So I think comparing what we are offering, which is a opt-in service, those who don't want to pay that fee, they are more than welcome to continue to pay their own fuel and drive their own things to the recycling centre and drop their own green rubbish off if they want to. That's entirely up to them. But what I would like to know a little bit more about would be, perhaps after now, is the, are these magic gardens that don't have any waste in winter? Because in the springtime, so that would be from end of March until end of August, you're not actually allowed to trim your hedges, cut your trees and things like that. That's the sort of thing you do in the in-between time. So those are the things that I do in winter and that's what I take to the recycling centre then. So there's leaves, there's all sorts of things that you pick up in winter that you don't have to do in spring. I want one of these magic gardens that I only have to, to take things away in the summer. That would be absolutely heavenly. So I might be popping around, Councillor Lewis, and find out how you do that. Um, but I do, I do, I welcome this service. So as I said at Cabinet, if only 10,000 households, and the research and the numbers have come from looking at all the other authorities in, in the area, um, and what the uptake percentage of uptake was in those areas, and this has given us the average of those uptakes relative to our population. So that would be um, if only 10,000 households stands, sign up to this, and they did were to go once a month, if they were to go, they may not, that would still be 120,000 car journeys, and I don't think the lorry is going to be the equivalent of that. I've asked about this particular issue on, on whether the lorry, and it is thought, I've been told, by, both by our climate officer and by Mr Reeks, that it, it will be more carbon effective for the lorry to be making these one journeys than it is for all the cars that currently drop off their waste. So I hope that puts your minds at rest on, on that side of it. As I said, I'm going to be buying my mum this subscription for her birthday because I think it's a great thing. And my mum probably won't share it with her neighbours, but... Uh, that's because her neighbours are all paved, so I don't think they need it whatsoever. But I welcome this scheme for its convenience, for everything. We've talked a lot about it tonight, is about actually financing this scheme, getting the money to do it. We've approved the scheme. Um, and I'm delighted to second this proposal. Thank you. Madam Mayor, my apologies. I believe Councillor Barron um, wished to raise a point of personal explanation that I missed before um, you brought Councillor Law in. So, um, Madam Mayor, Councillor Barron. Councillor Barron, would you like to... Thank you, Madam Mayor. And as I was named by uh, my colleague on the other side, I'd thank you for the opportunity to respond to that comment. Uh, call me a simple soul. He indicated it wasn't a taxation, but in my simple world, uh, my... Fund D council tax um, is, uh, for services is going to increase. Baron, this isn't a point of personal explanation. It's well, not. I will explain. I understand in my simple world that increasing 50 quid on my council tax is, is, is an increase in taxation. Thank you. Thank 
Councillor Murray, would you like to reply? Uh, your, exercise your right of reply, please. Thank you, Chair. And I'll, be, I'll be brief. Can I first apologise to Councillor Dwyer? My teeth dropped at the inappropriate moment, and I did mean 25,000, not 25. Um, so I'll get some super glues to come up or something. Um, but on a serious point, on a serious point, um, these charges, and it's £50 and £40 for those on the Council Tax Support Scheme, these are compatible with other authorities in Devon, Lib Dem, Tory, Independent, whatever. Um, it was only South Hams that is not, and has been uh, pointed out already. Um, unfortunately, and I'm not gloating at all, um, they are finding themselves in a few problems with collection there as well. I do share Councillor Thomas um, J. Uh, frustrations. I had those. I've been having those frustrations over the last three, nearly four years now. But three years. But we have been awaiting for this government over that period of time to to come off the fence and tell us who, what their what their idea is. Uh, is it going to be a government finance scheme or is it going to be a local authority finance scheme? We're still waiting. I know they've got probably other things on their mind at this, at this point of time, um, but we are, that's what we're, we're frustrating. And we took the bull by the horns and said, enough's enough's. Let's, let's do it, basically. Um, then very briefly, the sharing of a bin is an option, but that would be purely up to neighbourhood neighbours agreeing with each other. Are Swiss School going to complain if neighbours are sharing a bin cost or not? It's, that's not an issue. So, uh, can I ask that members cross party support this recommendation, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murray. I will now ask the Chief, Chief Executive to take the vote, please. Of course, Madam Mayor, members, um, please um, indicate those in favour of the motion um, before you. I believe that's unanimous, Madam Mayor. I now move to item eight, joint health and wellbeing strategy. Please refer to page 28. Can Councillor Stockman please put the cabinet's recommendations to the council? Oh, sorry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And now to something that I hope won't be so controversial. Um, Councillor Stockman, do please sit down. You're not no, I actually prefer right this oh, minute right. to stand up. Thank you. <laughs> um, as members will be aware, it's a statutory requirement for all upper tier local authorities to have a wealth and being strategy. The draft health and wellbeing strategy has been through due process and has been out to consultation. There were 92 responses which can be found in Appendix 2. And in the main, there was agreement with the objectives of the strategy, particularly in regard to mental health. It is regrettable that we still have a high number of suicides and self-harm, and we believe that this strategy builds on work that has been ongoing to address this. Two examples of this are the Mental Health Alliance and, more recently, the Multiple Complex Needs Alliance. Further information can be found within the report, which I hope all members will have read. The strategy is a collaborative document produced with our health and wellbeing partners, largely based on the recently refreshed Joint Strategic Needs Assessment and the Torbay Local Plan, and aims to improve the lives of people living in Torbay over the next four years. An update of the Marmot Review in 2021 showed that inequalities are widening and improvements in life expectancy stalled in the decade prior to the pandemic. Chris Whitty, the Chief Medical Officer for England, highlighted the challenges facing coastal communities whilst being some of the most beautiful and vibrant places to live. 
Together with our partners, five areas of focus were identified. They are mental health, healthy aging, good start to life, complex needs, digital inclusion. And at Cabinet, Councillor Barnby shared her concerns regarding digital inclusion, which I also share, and she has been invited to be part of a group looking into this. As we all know, through the pandemic, health organisations have moved more and more towards digi digital use. Therefore, inclusion for all is essential. At a volunteers group meeting I attended today, it is recognised that approximately 20% of people are currently unable to engage digitally and many of those would be considered to be amongst the most vulnerable in the Bay. So I thank Councillor Barnaby for her, in, for her interest and hope that her contribution to this area will make a difference. There were also, I'm really sorry, there's something happened to my... Yeah, that's right, okay. There are also six cross-cutting areas which are environment environmental sustainability, physical activity, good house, housing, reducing inequalities, supporting carers and increasing awareness and identification of domestic and sexual violence and abuse. These demonstrate the implications that varying issues can affect on our, um, have effect on our physical and mental well-being. The report gives our objectives and priorities and under each heading it gives the reasoning, the goals and the method of achievement which is a rarity, dare I say, in, in a strategy um, over the years that I've seen that you can actually see how it's going to be measured. Um, so the goals and actions laid out in Torbay's health and wellbeing strategy will be delivered by Torbay Council, constituent members of the Joint Health and Wellbeing Board and partners. Next to each identified focus area is the appropriate organisation that is responsible for delivery. We will ensure delivery by having a lead strategic group for each focus area who will oversee the programme and outcomes. I therefore move that the Council approve the Health and Wellbeing Strategy 2022 to 2026 as submitted in Appendix 1 of the report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stockman. Is there a seconder? Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I, I rise to second, if that's okay. Um, more than happy to second. And uh, there was, an, as Councillor Stockman has alluded to, there was an excellent discussion about this item recently uh, at Cabinet, and there have been many discussions elsewhere as well, with much cross-party agreement, particularly uh, on housing, uh, with uh, Councillors By and uh, Barnaby making some excellent points, uh, constructive points on housing as well. Some people who may wonder what housing has got to do with a health and well-being report. Well, this report lay, lays that out in, in stark terms. One in three people live in poor housing conditions in Torbay, and the levelling up white paper highlights that poor housing, overcrowding and temporary accommodation are key contributors to poor health and the quality of life. And this is, why, um, the, this, well, the, this is why the council has made such a focus on, on housing uh, currently and plan, plans to keep doing so. I'm pleased to see in item nine in the equality impacts that one of the aims of this strategy um, is to tackle um, inequalities in both health and inequality uh, as, as well. As well as um, going out to consultation, this report has been, been put together with health and well-being partners and represents the priorities not just of the council but a number of agencies uh, as well, right across Torbay. Um, I second, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Long. I now invite debate and I, Councillor um, Jane Barnby, please. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Madam Mayor. May I beg permission to remain seated, please? Thank you. Um, well, I, I, uh, harmony between the two ladies, um, Councillor Stockman and I agree quite considerably on this. And the sad thing is that shames we're all agreeing. We couldn't all have got together and written the same speech because I'm repeating a lot and uh, whatever. I, th I, I really welcome this very well prepared strategy. Um, it is the way forward, um, and I hope it, it bears fruit because we, at the beginning of this. 
uh, of this report makes very glum reading, um, talking about the self-harm and suicide rates, um, the, the, the housing, one in three in unfit accommodation. It's just horrifying. The number of young people in care, we know the reasons, but it's still it's tragic, um, and, and we really must a address this. Um, I, was, I was very pleased to see that it focused on, on five doable themes rather than a raft of undoable themes, which you, know, you could be talking about forever and nothing gets done. Um, mental health is such a priority. We, you know, we talk about through lockdown and COVID, but the number of people who are suffering anxiety now because of COVID still being rampant. Um, every day in, in my, my area, I, you know, people are frightened to go out still. And it, it's just self-perpetuating. So this, this kind of strategy, I hope, will get through it. Um, a good start to life, hubs, 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 communication, conversation, wonderful, absolutely marvellous. The only thing I, I, because of what Councillor Long came, um, alluded to, one thing I did feel was that in every of the themes, they should have put housing in every one, absolutely every one. I know it's a part of the whole theme, but just housing, housing, housing. Um, I think it was quite interesting that one of the comments from the, from the consultees regarding complex needs basically pointed out that people feel that they're being pushed from pillar to post between agencies. And with this, this strategy, I hope this will address this. I, I really do not. I, feel, I think it's aiming to. Um, Aging is, well is very close to my heart. Um, particularly as one of the goals is to be able to improve physical fitness and remove, remove risk of injuries from falls. I've been waiting to go to that clinic for a year, hence I'm asking to sit down. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, as as Councillor Stockman alluded to, digital um, inclusion is my passion. Um, she said all the things I want to say. So many people um, are not included. So many people if they haven't got friends or family to do it for them, won't be included. Lots of people can't afford it. She had the, the numbers, it's really important. I, but I did welcome that this, this strategy recognises that some people in this period of time will never want it. And I think it's great that it recognises that, that right of people to say, I don't want to use digital, and make sure that they are included. Um, I think the only sad thing about this is that the... <laughs> particularly with my passion for digital in, uh, inclusion, is that it says from the beginning that, that the consultation was digital and only got um, paper if you asked for it. And then it came to the conclusions from the consultation. Again, it said, we probably didn't quite get the right number of people here or the right number of results because it was mostly digital. I think that's a bit sad on this, what I consider to be excellent report. Uh, they could have done something a little bit more about that from the beginning with, but I, I recommend it wholeheartedly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barnley. Councillor Loxton, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just like to say thank you for a fantastic report um, to the you know, Director of Public Health. This is a really exciting report, and it's an important report, and it's got action plans and follow-ups for the future. Um, one of the main issues, I think, on here is obviously mental health. Like already, um, Councillor Barnby and Councillor Stockman already mentioned, and with the pandemic, um, you know people are have been isolated, and in one or two instances, you know have been and have tried to commit suicide over the last few months. I would like to thank also that the police force in Devon and Cornwall have been outstanding in preventing these these things. Everybody forgets what the police do. They do actually everything at the moment. Um, you know, I think they're the first, you know, person of call. Um, going on to other items on prevention, this is an important issue. Online communication is a very important thing. Um, people go online, youngsters to um, individuals, and they look online. They get involved. It's mental issues that are preventing uh, that acquire this. For instance, going onto the dark web, you know, we have the problems of that. They understand what to do if they want to commit suicide. It really is an important issue. Um, so, and also, we are all here in this room to help and prevent people committing suicide. It is an important issue, and many and the residents of Torbay also. Um, and also, really, you know, it goes down to 
clubs, sports coaches, even teachers, and everybody like that, just to name but a few, who have got to get together and you know prevent this sort of thing. So hopefully, you know, we, we can, you know, decrease the amount of suicides in the bay. There's been a several um, young individuals who've committed suicide, and it's been such a sad situation for Tor Bay. Let's hope that we can help everybody in this area. And by the way, the only good point is that you know you can set up a my fans only. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Loxton. Councillor Murray. Thank you, Chair. Um, when I read the report, all of a sudden I homed in on page 46, which was related to physical activity. Um, and it's clear that this is cross-cutting. This, this does uh, spread much wider than I think a lot of people realise. It also supports the, the uh, work carried out by Torbay on the Move. Um, Torbay on the Move uh, basically encourages residents of all ages and all rich or poor to, 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 um, to exercise more. And of course, as we all know, if um, exercise does maintain at least uh, people's health and well-being. So I, that's all I wanted to say, Chair, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Murray. Councillor O'Dwyer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it is a really good report. Um, it's the right strategy, and I think there's been some amazing work that's gone into it, firstly. Um, but I really do like a good target. We know that. When will the goals, as specified in here, be converted to something a bit more tangible, a bit more measurable and monitorable. Um, as many things will be delivered by many organiza multiple organisations um, at the same time and with each other, potentially bidding for, for grant monies. So how will they know where they're heading uh, towards those targets and not almost bidding against each other for funds to, to target different things? We don't have the outcomes framework that I can see in front of us um, that it states in here. And as this affects all of us and our residents in Torbay, will it be provided once completed to all members rather than just the Health and uh, Wellbeing Board? Thank you. As we... Oh, as... We don't have any more um, people wanting to speak. I will now return to Councillor Stockman for your right of reply. Um, Mother Mayor, can I um, remain seated, please? Because I'm sat down. Um, actually, um, Councillor O'Dwyer makes some very good points. Um, and so in, in response to, um, I mean, he will be aware that we are now moving to an integrated care system and an integrated care board and an integrated um, local partnership. So, so I think that we will not be working against one another, um, a bit like um, the alliance, like the Mental Health Alliance, which is Devon wide and the multiple complex needs, which has just been out to tendering. If you've had anything at all to do with that, it's very much um, partnership working. So I don't think that we'll have that. Uh, it's pooling of responsibilities and pooling of budgets. And um, basically, so I don't believe that the issues, I can see where you're coming from, but I don't, don't believe that we will be bidding for the same pots of money, you know. Um, so I don't think that would be a problem. From the point of view, um, I think the Health and Wellbeing Board is probably one of the, the most open boards that anybody can come along to. Um, and, I, and I don't see any problem at all with um, sharing the outcomes of this as we go along. I don't think we should, it's a strategy for four years, but I don't think we should wait for four years to see how it's working. And I'm sure that um, Dr. Sargent won't want to do that. Um, and he will do an annual report as to how we're going. So I, I hope I've allayed your fears. Um, you know, um, I've sort of been involved with um, health and wellbeing for some time now, and I have to say this 
actually impressed me from previous ones. I like the fact that each one's going to have a strategic group. They're going to be responsible for it. The areas are shown and who is responsible for it. So it's much more focused this time around. Um, so I'm really pleased uh, for it and I hope it will get unanimous support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stockman. I will now ask the Chief Executive to take the vote. Thank you. Of course, Madam Mayor. Members, those in favour, please raise your hands. Madam Mayor, that was unanimous. I move to item nine, future approach to cons constitution amendments. This item has been deferred. Item 10, final budget 2021-22, April 21 to March 22. Item 11, Treasury Manage and Outturn 21-22 um, report and item 12, Standing Order D11 in relation to overview and scrutiny, call-in and urgency of reports for noting and no voting is necessary. Thank you, members, for attending the meeting today. I will now close the meeting. Thank you. Pray silence and be upstanding.